Welcome to the Box of Textures. I'm a huge Philip Glass fan. Uh, this is a couple of riffs from a small bit of Satyagraha. And uh, Philip Glass, of course, is known for uh, dueling arpeggios in a sense. So he'll have an arpeggio or a melody line and he'll play it a thousand times and then on the 1200th time it'll change slightly and then 200 times later it'll change slightly again or uh what he may do is have one riff playing and then he'll play it against another riff of uh either different notes or a different length so they'll cycle around each other that sort of thing uh a lot of his stuff is like that and it's all amazing so this is from Satyagraha and uh, it's an organish piece as you can hear so let me stop that and we'll take a closer look so uh, to make the sound we have an additive oscillator and you can see the uh, each individual tone uh, essentially acts as a separate drawbar so that's what gives us this mighty organ sound and that goes through a VCA into the Hashin space generator which uh, not 100% sure what the actual official name of the module is, but uh, I use it a lot because it adds a lot of space to things. And the digital reverb after that kind of does the same thing in a way. It puts, puts the sound into a space. So that's what we have. So uh, that's kind of it for the sound generating aspects of this and uh, let's talk about the sequences so we have two sequencers running at the same time and I've done that before a number of times uh, but what makes this tricky is that the sequences are different lengths the top one is essentially 4-4 four, four, and the bottom one is 3-4 uh, I've used the Mighty Piano Roll Oscillator, I mean uh, the Mighty Piano Roll Sequencer from Sherry Audio, because uh, it lets you have much longer sequences. And it also, this is key, it lets you specify the bar length. So I've got all of these notes as one bar. And the point of that is that there's this handy bar crossing output jack so every time you change bars uh, you get a pulse out of this port and there it is so every time it finishes the bar loops back around and starts over again you get a pulse so essentially for our purposes it is an end of sequence pulse and that uh, will become very useful down the road so let's take a look at this uh, We've got the sequencer. We've got a MIDI to CV output. Uh, so we get pitch and gate. And we have two of those, one for 3-4, one for 4-4. Four, four. We also have this eight by one switch. And the output of sequencer one is here and the output of sequencer two is here. And what we're going to be doing is switching back and forth between the two sequences. And you could 
click this manual step button and that will manually change to the different sequences. But the problem with that is uh, you have to get the timing exactly right on the beat at the end of the bar. And also that's complicated because the bars are different lengths. So uh, we have a mechanism to get around both of those issues. And that mechanism is this switch module and what it is is it's eight switches one two three four five six seven it's seven switches and uh they have physical switches i'll flip this one at the bottom because it's not connected to anything so i won't mess anything up so uh the top row uh this switch is nothing but a five volt voltage source so that's always on it's sending five volts out and that's coming to the circuit one input of the switch module and coming out of circuit one of the switch module that goes to the step trigger input of our switch and the point here is that every time this switch is clicked we allow the five volts to go to the step trigger and that is what advances between outputs one and two or uh, if there were more than two outputs you would say it advances but we're switching back and forth between outputs one and two and that output comes out here and that's sending the voltages to the pitch input of the additive oscillator and that's where we're getting our sound from so we have two switches here and we've used another two circuits of the switching module so let's take a look at exactly what we're doing so remember uh, I mentioned before the bar blip so every time the bar ends and starts over you get a blip coming out of the sequencer and that is patched to the input of this circuit and uh, there's two of them. This is the 4-4 sequencer, sequencer 1. This circuit is the 3-4 sequencer, sequencer 2. And right now, nothing's happening because these switches are not activated. So if I were to turn on this switch, we would send the blips coming out at the end of the bar through to here, and that would go to two places. It would go up to the voltage controlled input of the first circuit and every time we send a pulse there that lets the five volts through which switches the step trigger and that changes what which port on the eight by one switch we're sending through to the output at the same time it goes somewhere else uh, let's follow that loop it goes here to the reset jack of sequencer number two so what we're doing so what we're doing is we are at the same time flipping this switch so we're listening to a different sequencer and we are resetting the other sequencer back to the beginning so that's two of the criteria, and there's a third one. So let's take a look at flipping this. Uh, I'm going to wait for the sequence to get to the middle. Here, there's the blip. Now I'm going to activate the switch, and the next time we get a blip, it's going to flip to the second sequencer. And then I will turn off this switch so that we'll still get blips, but they won't go and affect anything beyond that so right now we're getting blips here and the second sequencer is running that's the 3-4 sequencer so we'll wait and we're in the middle now flip the switch well here's a blip there it was we'll turn that off and now we have gone and changed to the first sequencer so there's the three criteria. We're in the middle of the sequence, we flip the switch, and we're gonna get the blip. 
and there it was, and then we'll turn off the switch. So those are the three important criteria. Uh, which sequence is running, waiting for the blip, and we have randomly selected which, whether or not we're going to allow the sequence to change. And those are our three things. So this is all well and good, but uh, who wants to sit here all day flipping these switches? That's not what I want to do. I want to sit back with my feet up, you know, maybe chugging a beer, watching some football. Who knows what I'm going to be doing? Won't be either of those things, but that's neither here nor there. So instead of sitting here uh, flipping these two switches, I spent several days, literally two or three days solid, uh, trying to get this to work and going through some uh, experimentation, shall we say. And I got it working halfway decently, and I just could never get the logic right. So what I did is I whipped out my iPad, did a quick sketch of how it logically should work, and that was a super messy diagram. Uh, so I actually drew it on my Mac and uh, made a nice looking diagram so we can take a look at that and examine the logic of this switching back and forth and how we can do this automatically in uh, a slightly revised patch. So let's go take a look at that diagram and the logic and then we'll take a look at the new and improved version of the sequence. Here is a hasty diagram I drew up. Sequencer 1. Sequencer 2. So here's what we're doing. Here are the three criteria. Every time we pass a bar, that gets delayed slightly, so it's halfway through the sequence. Uh, as soon as it hits halfway through the sequence, that flips a switch, and that switch is on. Now, if we decide to randomly switch these things, and we're playing this sequence, all three of those have to be true, which flips this AND gate. That triggers the switcher, and now we're listening to sequencer number two. And we have the same thing. We have another AND gate. So when all three things in the AND gate are same three criteria, uh, we randomly decide that we're going to switch back to the other sequence. It hits the bar, that gets delayed halfway through the sequence. That switch closes, so now we have two things. And then if we are playing this sequence, all three things are true. The AND gate gets triggered. It sends a pulse to the switcher. And now we have switched sequencers again. So uh, the orange is the audio. So we're sending notes out of sequencer one through the switcher and then out to the oscillator. And, or we're sending notes out of sequencer two out to the oscillator. And the switcher, which is here slightly simplified, is what's doing the work. So Basically, the AND gates have our three criteria that we mentioned before in the manual version. So let's take a look at the automatic version. And here is the new and improved version of this patch. So let's take a look at it. Uh, it's actually identical in part to the original version. We have the two mighty piano rolls, we have the additive oscillator and the effects that let you hear that. We have the same 8x1 switch, we have the same voltage source, and we have the exact same 
switch module. So uh, one of the major differences is this started to get complicated, so I started labeling things, uh, and that has made it a lot easier for me to follow and remember what the heck I was doing. So let's go through this and see what we have. So here is our switching module. And remember, uh, we had the AND gate where we needed the three criteria to be all three of them to be true to flip to the other sequencer. So the first thing we need to know is which sequence is running. So to our switching module, we have added another output. So every time it switches, we get a pulse here on this flip-flop. And every time we get a pulse, right now, this is the normal output of the flip-flop, so to speak, and that is off. And because the normal output is off, the not output, the logical not, is on. So every time we change to the other sequence, uh, we will either have this one, this one on, or this one on. And let's follow that. That goes to this gate here, and that is on because uh, if the sequence were running, that would be the one we're hearing. So let's, that's one of the criteria which sequencer is on. So right now, this one is on, and you can see input C is lit up on this AND gate. And you could see that, uh, whoops, here it is. Uh, this sequence, this input is not lit because we are not listening to the 3 4 sequence at the moment if it were running. Okay, now we are running the 4-4 sequence, but I've temporarily disabled the switching aspect. So let's take a look at this. Right now, input C is on because that sequence is running. And every time it passes the bar, we get that blip pulse coming out. Here it comes. There it is. So what happens is, every time we get a blip at the gate because the bar has ended, five seconds later we get a blip at this output, which gets sent to the input of the flip-flop, and the output of the flip-flop is here. So every time we get a blip, there it is, we flipped the output on, and the next time we get a blip, we flop the output off. So it's a flip-flop. It goes on and off every time we get a blip from sequencer A. So this input tells sequencer A, tells the gate that sequencer A is running. This input says, at the ends of the bar, let us look for a signal, and this input of the flip-flop, of the Boolean gate, rather. Let me turn this on. So here we have an LFO, which is acting as a very slow clock, frequency half a hertz, or once every two seconds. We send out a narrow pulse. That goes to the input of this sample and hold. So every two seconds, we're sampling this random voltage. That random voltage goes to the input of this threshold detector. So if that voltage is over three quarters of a volt, we get this output turned on. So it's on. And we'll wait for the next time it randomly goes. There it is, it's on again.
and it's staying high and now it's off again so let's take a look at the second input of this gate circuit now it's on uh, although uh, notice that we are playing the 3-4 oh, it just switched so we're playing the 4-4 we've got this input on this input goes on at every time uh, we get the blip and now we're waiting for this random voltage detector to trigger so all three are lit up oh, it went out when all three are lit we get an output on this and gate because that's what we're taking there are you can choose many different gate styles but we're interested in the and we want all three to be true and there it is So now we have to, uh, this is true because 4-4 is playing. This is true because it's hit the blip. And now we've got all three going at once. But the issue is, remember, in the manual version of this, we had these two switches. So in the middle of the sequence, I would say, okay, I am deciding to change. So I will press this switch. And it just happened while we were looking at it. So now I will decide to press this switch. And now that happens. So we're back on the 4-4 sequence. So this can run any number of times. Uh, it's switching quickly right now. But it could go, you know, 15 or 20 times before it switches. It's up to the random voltage detector that we built out of the LFO and the threshold. So, we're sitting now on the 4-4, and we're waiting for all three to be true at once at the AND gate, which will flip this switch, and if that happens to be lit at the exact same time we get the bar crossing blip, we will trigger the flip circuit, so to speak, and we will change to the other sequencer. And uh, that's basically it. That's the entire thing. So... Uh, I have this handy counter, too. This is the fifth repeat, and we've cycled through the different sequences. Oh, it just flipped. We're now in the ninth cycle on the first repeat. And now we're on the tenth cycle. So you can see it is flipping back and forth with no user intervention. So now I can, like I said, put my feet up, watch the cricket match say if that's what happens to be on and uh the sequencers will be happily chugging in the background flipping back and forth between them and perfectly synchronized and uh restarting so there's no glitches and everything's on the beat even though they're different lengths and different note counts and uh the whole thing works which not that it was surprising to me that I got it working, but it took a lot of work to get the logic right. Uh, not something I usually do in synthesizers. I mean, this is like computer programming logic in a sense, as opposed to synthesizer logic. But hey, in the world of modular, uh, you can do both. So, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and maybe learned a thing or two, or not up to you uh as always like subscribe patreon like the video that uh helps tremendously and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined and i also have a patreon so uh that will support this crazy endeavor if you're so inclined for that uh on the patreon i post these things sometimes i post them uh earlier than i do uh out in public and i also upload a fair number of my the actual patch files so uh you can download those if you're a patreon member and load them up on your own systems and play with them mangle them extend them do them correctly possibly it's up to you anyway like subscribe patreon and thank you for listening